Hey, visionaries, you are now tuned in to the Starts With a Vision podcast, where everything you do in life starts with a vision. If your vision is clear or foggy, you are in the right place. It's time to go take what's yours, because there's a vision only you can see, and a dream only you can dream. And now, your host, Mr. Starts With a Vision. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are listening to this, I want to say hello, pretty much, right? But for the sake of this just coming out, I want to say good morning to you. And I want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, What's really funny is ever since we scaled down to one episode per week, um, downloads have actually been going up per episode. So I think that that's pretty interesting. So, you know, um, I'm just listening to that that feedback and going with it. So we're going to keep this going. Um, you know, a few, a few weeks, we're going to just do a solo episode of me. Um, I think I'm going to start sharing things that I've learned um, in the documentation of building up this luxury sunglass brand as well. So, you know, just, just stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and everywhere else that it's at. And also, with that being said, um, today's guest is amazing, and the story is amazing, and it's also, I'm extremely happy for her because she was sleeping on herself for quite a while, but she finally woke up, and she took the pill, she swallowed the entrepreneurial pill, and we're going to be talking about that whole that whole journey, that whole process. So today's guest is Kimberly Marie Clements, and what she does is she is a not only a, a a web designer and a graphic designer, but she really works with you know um, Lux brands, and she helps people make their brands aesthetically pleasing through you know visual content, whether it be um, you know flyers or web design, and just like that whole package. And so I am excited to talk to her. I'm glad we were able to get her on the podcast because she has a lot of knowledge, and she really. She really just um, jumped into entrepreneurship full time um, a few months ago after she was laid off. And she's going to tell you about all of that. So um, today's episode is with Kimberly Marie Clements. What's going on, world? This is Isaiah Fowler, a.k.a. Mr. Starts with the Vision. And you already know we're coming to you with these interviews of these amazing entrepreneurs who have who have and are and still want to make a difference in this world. They don't want to live by the societal norms of working a regular job every day for the rest of their lives. And today's guest is no different. We have Kimberly Marie on the line. And what I really like about her is um, her perspective is going to be a lot different. A lot of times that people are on this podcast, they're talking about, you know, how they, you know, had a job and they didn't want to be, be there forever. And, you know, four or five years ago they quit. But let me tell you something about Kim. She just got laid off not too long ago, but she's already booked for three months in advance. And so when I heard that, I said, you know what? I think we found the winner. So (laughs) how are you doing today, Kim? I am fabulous today. I am taking my time out to talk with you about this. And as soon as we're done, I'm going to get back to work. But I'm doing well. Thank you. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you are doing amazing and I'm glad you are doing very well. I'm good myself and I thank you for asking as well. So um, I guess the first question I have for you is, and this is, you know, something that just the report that we've built and we're going to get to this in depth, but why was you playing games? (laughs) (laughs) So let me tell you something. Let me start from the beginning on why I became an entrepreneur in the first place. It was on accident. It was not on purpose. Um, Mm -hmm. At my last job before the one I got laid off from, I was getting ready to get laid off. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, no, I started my business because I needed to build my portfolio. Um, Because when I graduated from college in the middle of the recession, it was hard for me to find a job. And I'm a I'm a um, web designer and a graphic designer. And at the time, a lot of people weren't hiring. I didn't have any experience. So what I did was I started freelancing so that I can get my own clients so that I can build my portfolio. So since I couldn't get a job, I was like, I'm going to create my own job. So that's what I did. So I started freelancing. Mm-hmm. And um, just on the side, just to build my portfolio, I didn't make it a business or anything like that. And I was... Um, Not too long after that, I got the notice that I was going to be getting laid off at my previous job. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I was making money. You know, I wasn't making enough to support myself, but I'm like, okay, well, let me see if I can try to 
get, you know, get clients, more clients so that I can, you know, do this for myself. So that's pretty much how it all started. And I didn't, I was playing games because I just, I didn't know how to be an entrepreneur. I didn't think, I didn't know anything about online marketing. I didn't know anything about being an entrepreneur. I didn't know anything. So I enrolled into a course. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's Marie Forleo's B School. Mm-hmm. So I enrolled to that course and not while I was in the course, I was making really good money. I was getting clients, but then I got scared. I'm not even going to lie. I was scared. Even though I was making money, even though I was getting clients, even though people were booking me out months in advance, I was scared to just take the leap. So I, um, somebody from my old job offered me a position as a designer. So I'm like, you know what, let me take this opportunity to kind of learn about the business. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that had never worked professionally as a designer. So I'm like, you know what, let me, let me work in a design related job first before I actually go into it full time. So mm-hmm. that's pretty much if you quote unquote, while I was playing games because I was, you know what, let me use this opportunity to learn everything that I can. Mm-hmm. I told myself if I get laid off again, then Instead of me just quitting, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm listening. <laughs> Instead of me just quitting, I'm like, if I ever get laid off again, um, then I'll just take that as a sign that this is entrepreneurship is somewhere I need to go. So I was basically asking God for this, but I wasn't really like, I don't, I don't think I really believed it. I'll just okay. say that. I didn't believe it. So I said that. I put that out there. I gave myself, I said, okay, I'm going to give myself three years, right? I'm gonna three, give myself three years at this job. Now, if I get laid off, Okay. If I don't get laid off, I'm going to quit. But I got laid off. So it sounds like, so what it sounds like is you really didn't want to leave at all. (laughs) Is that what it sounds like? (laughs) That's what it sounds like. Let's be real. The money was, the money was good. And I was getting, you know, paychecks every two weeks and stuff, you know? So, I mean, Mm -hmm. I guess, okay. I didn't want to leave, but then no, I did want to leave this last, this last year my anxiety, I have anxiety and it got really bad. So I'm like, okay, at the end of this year, I'm leaving no matter what. I don't care what it is. I don't care how much money I have in my bank. doesn't matter. I'm leaving at the end of this year. That was right. this year that I got laid off. Okay. So, so, so um, where did you go to college at? I went to the Art Institute. So, really? I went, yes. Me I too. Went to the Art, I'm sorry. Me too. Oh, did you? I went to the Art Institute and I transferred to Full Sail. Oh, okay. So I went to the Art Institute um, of Orange County here, and then I transferred over to the Art Institute online. So I started my degree on campus, and then I just finished online. Okay. 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 So then, and was it like a like a corporate job per se, or was it like um, not a not corporate ish? I mean, there's corporate. It was corporate politics, but mm-hmm. it was, I, mean, I didn't work at an ad, ad agency. I worked for YP YP dot com. I don't know if okay. anybody's familiar with that. It used to be yellowpages dot com. Okay. But um, they they rebranded and named mm-hmm. themselves YP. Mm-hmm. That's where I worked. I mean, it was a corporate environment, but it wasn't right. like it wasn't it was a creative environment, but it wasn't like an ad agency. So I guess it was kind of corporate. Okay, okay. So 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 let let's talk about why. Well, not even why. So you get laid off. Yep. What's what's going through your mind? What happens? How you feeling? You know, are you nervous? Are you scared? Are you excited? I don't think you were really excited because, you know, from what you told me, um, you Wait. was game. So you wasn't excited. But how were you feeling when you got laid off? Actually, I was excited. Really? Um, oh, yeah, because you know what? I was like, I, that was my confirmation for me. That was my confirmation. Mm-hmm. And I felt comfortable. I felt confident enough in myself that I do a good job as, as a designer. I've learned as much as I can and anything else I can learn along the way. But I was confident enough because I've made money before and I was confident enough that I can do this again. Now, I was still nervous. Yes, because freelancing is different than being an entrepreneur. That's com- two completely different things, especially when you're working a full time job and you're like, you know, freelancing on the side. It was com- it was it was a completely different experience. And I didn't know what to expect. Like I have friends that have came before me. And I know people that have done this before me, but everybody's experience is different. So, you know, the things I heard was, you know, it's going to be difficult sometimes, you know, things are going to be up and down. Sometimes things are great. Sometimes things are not. And I was excited, but I didn't know, like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, what does that mean? Things are good. And then they're not like, does that mean money? Does that mean friends? Does that mean family? Like, what exactly does that mean? Mm -hmm. So I was excited, 
I mean, me and my husband, when I when I found out that we I was getting laid off, we went out and we toasted. We had champagne. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let's order, let's order a bottle of champagne mm-hmm. and let's, let's toast this because I have to say I have to get myself in that mindset because if I d- didn't, then I would be looking for another job. Mm-hmm. So, but I was excited, but I was still I was still nervous. Right. I didn't know what to Right. So you said that, you know, you didn't know if it was when people were saying this up and down and stuff, you didn't know if it was the money, if it was the friends or whatever. So, you know, now from your experience, you know, what was it? What were they talking about? All of it. (laughs) All of it. Like every, like it was like, it was all of it because I mean, you, you're, you're going from, you're going from working a full-time job and mostly, most of my friends have full-time jobs, Right. Most of my friends, most of my, not friends on Facebook, not people I've, I've networked with, but my actual friends that I've been close with for pretty much most of my life, they have nine to five jobs. So when I got laid off, I knew I was going to have to spend way more time than I ever would have in a regular job, you know, building my business. And that means time away from my friends. So, um, and then with family too, you know, family was like, oh, you know, even though I was like, I'm working for myself. Oh, okay. Well, here's this job that I found. I'm like, why are you sending me jobs? You know, I'm, I'm trying to work for myself. That isn't just because I'm at home all day. doesn't mean I'm just sitting here doing nothing. Like this is my, this is now my job. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing it for myself. So with the friends, the family, and then the money, you know, not knowing where, you know, I'm like, okay, how am I going to get clients to come, come to me? Even though I was freelancing before, you know, I was kind of like a side hustle when I was doing that before I wasn't very visible like I was before. So I always had clients and then, you know, working a full-time job, I stopped taking clients. So people stopped emailing me, you know, people stopped emailing me or referring me because I wasn't visible anymore. So I pretty much had to start all over again. Mm. So everything that everybody was talking about, the money, all of that, that's true. Mm-hmm. That's it. And then, you know, being <clears throat> at home all day, not talking to anybody, you know, that's a whole different thing that I just was like, I'm kind of an introvert. I'm an ambivert. So I'm extroverted when I'm comfortable. And then when I'm not, I'm just like, I don't want to deal with people. It's, it's really exhausting. So when I'm at home all day, you know, it was, it's just different. It's just mm-hmm. different. So it was, it was what they said it was. And mm-hmm. then having to learn things that I didn't know I was going to have to learn, like, systems like automated systems all these new systems i had to learn i didn't know i was going to need to know all this stuff right so so yeah that's 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 a lot um and it's funny because it's funny because like for me when i hear these things Mm -hmm. like it's so second nature to me and and not in a not in a condescending way but it's more like a it's like funny because it's crazy because a lot of times you know this is like our life. Like what, yeah. what was new to you at, you know, like an initial shock, mm-hmm. you know, me and my homeboys, we could be like, man, this is our life. Like, you know what I mean? Like we know, we already know what that feel like. And it's just right. like very interesting, you know, hearing it from you. And like, mm-hmm. what, what was the thing that like, what was the, 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 the category that was like the, the biggest shock to you? Marketing. And, Mark- and Talk about it. So you think when I, when I was, you know, when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, you know, what I love, which is, you know, web design and, you know, brand styling and brand design. I get to do that all day. I get to work with clients, you know, I get to um, take lunches at pretty restaurants and do my work there. That's all I need to do. That's it. But no, I had to actually do my job, obviously that plus I had to market myself. So learning how to market myself was something that I just, I, I didn't know what it really entailed. I mean, it was more than just sending out my email list. You know, I had an email list from before, but it was just more than that. It was more about, I had to be visible and figuring out where my clients were, you know, where do my clients hang out, getting, getting in front of them, engaging my clients. And not just, you know, it, it's more, it was more like learning how to, I need to learn how to build a, a community, you know, and it's not just more than just, okay, here's a freebie or here's a, a lead, my lead magnet here. This is what, you know, I'm going to give you this and sign up for my email list, get into my funnel. It was way more than that. So that was the, that's the biggest shock or the big, biggest thing that I had to learn. And I had to learn it quickly because if I didn't, then I'm not going to be able to eat. Right. 
And um, mm-hmm. how did you combat that? Like, what was your, did you market yourself? Did you, you know, how did you find out where your clients were hanging out at and all that stuff? And what type of, you said graphic design and web design, right? Right. Where, like, what type of graphic design and web design? And what I mean is, are you like doing premiere high end or like what, you know, where are you at in the, in the food chain, if you will? Okay, so you want to answer that question first or the other one? About however, it? however you want to do it, K-Money. Okay. <laughs> so how I learned uh, about marketing myself, what I did was I hired a marketing coach. I mean, I knew what I knew enough to get by, to get enough, but it wasn't going to be enough to, for me to sustain myself. Mm-hmm. So I had to hire a marketing coach. So there's a couple of people that I reached out to that kind of helped me. Um, Jasmine Powers, she's been amazing. Um, and then I reached out to a guy who's also a designer. He does the same thing I have done and he's in this done the same things he's pretty much doing the same thing i'm doing and he does high-end branding um packaging and branding for like high-end brands so that's what he does so i wanted to position myself as a i wouldn't say necessarily like really high end but something kind of middle of the road i'm not i'm not it's not for the affordable person who's just starting out i have things for that i have items or you know services for that but i'm primarily targeting like solopreneurs female creative solopreneurs so my branding and my, you know, and my web design is targeted to those women who are looking to make like six figures, you know, who are looking to take their brands to the next level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So well, I hope that question. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I know there's a lot of people out there, um, <laughs> their website, it looked real janky. <laughs> like, it looked like something from like, oh, <laughs> And, you know, right. like a whole bunch of pictures is deleted. Like it just <laughs> looked bad. A whole bunch of broken links and stuff. And so, yeah, that just what you saying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there is a difference between somebody like you can be starting out. But right. if you aspire to make, you know, X yeah. amount of dollars, then your exactly. presentation is going to be higher. But a lot of people, they just get started. Right. And their website got a whole bunch of broken links and stuff and it don't look official. <laughs> or graphics. But I mean, like I'm targeting women who are looking to make and when you're making six figures, obviously you're targeting people who have more money. So yeah. I'm targeting women who are looking to grow their business to six figures or more. So obviously you need to have a completely different brand aesthetic than somebody who's starting out. So if somebody Absolutely. you're starting out, you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able, not to say you can't reach those clients. I mean, I'm sure they can get, you know, more expensive clients. But if I'm going to drop $10,000 on a coaching package with you or $20,000 on a VIP coaching session for three months, then your website can't be looked like it was designed in Wix or Canva. And there's something wrong with those things if you're just starting out. But my client is looking to up level. Right. Just know where, yeah, just know where, you know, you want to go. Exactly. Right. So what, um, where do your clients hang out with? Like, where did you find out that your clients were hanging out with? I don't know if I'm, if this is a question that you don't want to answer. I saw that little grin. <laughs> <laughs> My clients are, um, they're around. Um, I'm primarily targeting like, so I work with female creative entrepreneurs. So, mm-hmm. you know, they might be in a Facebook group or, okay. um, you know, that I'm in, or they might be on my, they might've signed up for my email list. They might've found me online somewhere. Um, primarily most of the way that I, how I get in front of my clients is obviously I'm doing Facebook lives. So I'm doing Facebook lives. That's what I've been doing, doing video and my blog. So I I have a lot of people that'll find me on my blog. So I'm blogging, creating content that way. I'm sending out newsletters that way and then i'm doing facebook lives and then i'm getting ready to move on to youtube mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then um and then mostly it's word of mouth and i have a couple of i have a speaking engagement coming up this weekend so i'm getting in front of them that way so um yeah okay no and and that's that's good because the thing is um i just wanted to you know just know kind of like what really like what platform that you were you know mm-hmm. i didn't mean like like exactly like Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just like the platform, just to kind of give people, you know, some type of idea or whatever. Because at the end of the day, nobody could be Kim like Kim is Kim. Exactly, and Facebook is normally where I will find them. And usually, it's like it's just I'm not even trying to find clients. See the groups that I'm in. It's usually I'm just offering. I'm answering. I'm solving a a problem quickly. So 
there's a problem that they have and then I have a really quick solution for them that mm-hmm. it solves their problem and they don't have to give me any money or anything like that. And usually other people will see that too. And that's how usually people will start contacting me that way. Um, and, or I'm on Facebook and then somebody shared my video right. that they thought, you know, so that's usually the ways I'm mostly Facebook is where I, I get most of my clients. Got you. Got you. Now that, that makes perfect sense. And so, you know, what were some other things that as you started this business recently, um, mm-hmm. you had to, you know, you had to really learn, was it sales or was it, you know, what other things were like, damn, I didn't know it was like this. Or was it just like how people are cutthroat or what? Um, it's kind of more in the way of how kind of figuring out how my ideal client thinks, mm-hmm. you know, what she thinks, what she's looking for and like getting my copy in order. So I don't know if that's part of sales or just marketing, but really understanding what their pain points are. I mean, I thought I knew what that was. I thought I knew my pain points, but I don't think that my copy was, it was good, but it wasn't, it didn't directly speak to their like, okay, that's me. When they go to my website and they read my copy, you know, about my services, um, that's me. Or when I'm creating content for my newsletter, um, learning how to use the copy that maybe I have on my website to speak that speaks to them that solves their problem immediately without even without me even having to say something. So I guess that is part of the sales mm-hmm. um, that's doing it for me that I don't even have to keep getting on Facebook Live all the time. Mm-hmm. I can just shoot out an email and have some copy in there that speaks to whatever problems that they're having, and usually it'll solve that problem. And I'll just make some little extra coins you know, people will sign up for, uh, you know, a strategy session with me, a branding strategy session with me or a uh, book, you know, a, a full package with me. So mm-hmm. I hope that answers your question. Mm-hmm. And what is, what does your full package um, consist of? It consists of a full brand. It's a, it's a brand identity and it's a website. So it's pretty much, it'll, it's, it's not just a website, but it gives them everything they're going to need to market themselves online and, mm-hmm. I help them with the strategy behind it and not, I'm not a branding strategist. I help with the visual. So we, we dive in together and we work with intention and strategy as far as the visuals go. So when we're working together, you know, we have a one hour branding session, a brand, a visual brand strategy session. We're figuring out who your ideal client is. Um, and we'll kind of dive into how they want to position themselves as a brand. So I know, you know, how fancy do I need to make their website look? How glamorous, you know, how sophisticated does it need to look? Because if it looks really expensive and they're targeting somebody who can only afford to spend $1,000, it might turn those clients away. So it's really trying to get into the mind of, you know, who their ideal client is. Um, and then I also help them with their styling. So as far as their clothing goes, all of that. So, um, and then they get a website. But then when I'm designing websites with clients, it's more than just a website. We're designing with their business goals in mind. So if they're launching a course or if they're launching um, a retreat or if they're launching, if they're just, you know, marketing services or if they have an e-commerce site that they're selling, then we we talk about those things um, during our consult. Got you. And you do, you, do you design e-commerce sites as well? Um, I design sites with e-commerce functionality, but I don't just, I don't really do like Shopify or anything like that. Uh So, Mostly for people, um, if they are solopreneurs and they have a couple of products, maybe a couple of books to sell or a couple of products to sell, that's primarily like primarily where I focus. Okay. Okay. And, and, you know, on this journey that you've been on so far, what's been like the most rewarding thing for you up to this point? Man. And it's like, it's so silly, not silly, but it's like so simple. The most rewarding thing for me is I'm able to spend time with my family. Like like before I was always busy, you know, during the week driving home and I live in LA. So driving home in traffic, could be like two hours, you know, so I'm able to, if my mother-in-law calls me, she's like, Hey, you want to go hang out today? I'm able to, I'm able to spend more time with her. Mm-hmm. Um, I know my anxiety is like at an all time low. Um, so I, you know, I suffer from anxiety. So that has been easier. Um, just being able to just enjoy my life. That's been right. so much more rewarding and obviously making I've been so far, I've made more money than I've made since then in my full time job Mm -hmm. so far, which I was like, wow, like already, you know, I thought 
like really slow at first, and it was, but you know, it's starting to pick up. Right. So I to make more money than I was on my full time job. So, um, just to be clear, you said you so you've start you've been doing this since August. Am I right? I mean, I've had my business since 2012, but full time, yes, yeah, since August. Yes. Yeah. So, so w- what you said, you've made more money since your full time job. You've made more money since August in your full time job this year, or like the whole time? No, in August. Since August. Since August, yes. Right. So, and you know, I just want that to be a testament to people who who are scared, right? Who don't yeah. know what they want to do, who right. don't know if it's going to be successful. We're mm-hmm. talking to somebody right now who legit just got laid off three months ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she just told you guys, I made more money you know, in this amount of time that I made the whole year at my J-O-B. Oh, not the whole year, but as far as like monthly. Oh, okay. But that's still okay, good. Not the whole year. I wish. That'd be amazing. But no. Oh, well, no, that's coming. That's coming. <laughs> no, it's coming. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't been a full year yet, but as far as like my monthly salary, like mm. I've already, I've doubled that already. Right. Already. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's okay. so, so, okay. So let's say this. She's doubled her income in 90 days. Yes, <laughs> I, I sure did. I did. I don't want income. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah, why couldn't you believe it? Did you believe that you could do this, or did you believe that you know you had the capability? I believe I had the capability, but I thought it was going to take me longer to get. Like most people that I've read, you know, just researching online, people would say, "Oh, you need a, you know, you need a year of savings," and you do. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I had money saved up because I knew, like, at some point, I was going to be able to do this, but. Um, you hear people say, oh, you need a year savings. It's going to take you a year to ramp up. It's going to take you this long to, you know, be able to make the, to replace your, your full-time income. You just hear these stories. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to believe. I heard people, oh, my first month working for myself only made $500 or I only made a thousand dollars or I only made $50. So, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but to actually surpass my monthly income was just like, wow. Mm-hmm. I'm already, but I mean, it's a blessing. Right, absolutely. Blessing. And you know, um, and I, I want to use that as a testimony, but I also don't want people thinking that it's going to be just like that. Cause no, it's not. <laughs> Cause you I, know, I, I hired a marketing coach. So, I mean, it helps. That helps. I mean, you, you have to spend money to make money. And I didn't want to, I wouldn't say I took a shortcut, but I knew I needed to learn certain things that I didn't know. And I didn't have time to be, I didn't have time to Google. I wasn't trying to Google. I wasn't trying to ask everybody. And I just went, I just like, here, I got money. Let's, let's do this. That's called being smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't like, that's being smart because a lot of times, you know, people do want to do things the hard way and they do want to hire right. people. And, I mean, they don't want to hire people, all this crazy stuff. That's called right. you actually just utilizing your resources and being smart. So there's nothing wrong with that as well. You know, I just want you to know that like, that's not the shortcut that's using your okay. brain. Yeah. That's using your brain. Like don't ever let anybody make you think that, Oh no, this is stupid. Or, you know, um, I, I, I cheated and I, I should know. Like, why would you want to struggle? Like, why would you want to go the hard way? I don't know. I just took my, I got a severance. I had a small severance. I didn't get very much. Right. I got a small severance and I took that money that I got and I invested it into my business. I was like, I'm taking that money and I'm hiring, mar- I'm hiring a marketing coach. Right. And ASAP. That's what I did. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I need to get where I need to go. I need to get, and I need to get there quicker than, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what do I do? Learning from my mistakes. I mean, I'm still making mistakes. Obviously that's not going to prevent me from making mistakes, but it just helped me it just helped my, it just helped everything clicked way quicker than it would, it would have if I was just Googling something, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And it's like, you're making mistakes for profit. Correct. You know, yep. like I'm pretty sure we'd rather be doing that than not. Right. Yeah. You know? So yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So if you can, um, if you can leave people with one thing, you know, mm-hmm. what, what, what is your like one, one thing that you would, that you would say to people, maybe it's somebody who, just started a business and they kind of are struggling or somebody who doesn't really know if they should quit or not, you know? I would just say you have to make that decision for yourself. Um, If you, first of all, you need to have a plan. You need to have a plan. So if you, if you're looking, if you're thinking about quitting or, you know, you're in a position 
to where you're thinking about quitting or, or you don't know if you want to quit, I would say, first of all, if you have a business, continue to use, if, you're, if they're working a full-time job, use that job to finance their business. Use that job to finance their business and learn everything they can about marketing. Everything about they can about marketing because that's the most important thing because they obviously if they started a business, they're already pretty much an expert in what they are, what they do. But if they don't know anything about marketing, they need to learn about marketing and invest money into a coach, into resources. You know, it doesn't have to be a coach. It can be an ebook or whatever. You know, there's books at, at Barnes and Noble, at the library, learn everything you can about marketing and then set up a plan to figure out, okay, um, these are the steps I'm going to take, um, you know, before I, before I quit. And you can test out things. I would say, especially if you, especially if you're working a full-time job, you have the opportunity to test out different marketing strategies, you know, to see what works and what doesn't. And once you have that luxury to be able to do that and you're making money, quit, you know, quit because I feel like if I was, I should have quit three years ago. I agree. Three years ago. No, seriously. Cause I was doing so well um, that it didn't make any sense why I was working. It is, it didn't make any sense, you know? Mm-hmm. So if you know that you can do this, you can do it. Just, just quit. That's all I have to say, man. Just quit. If mm-hmm. you know you could do it, then just quit. And if you know you can do it, that what that means is if you believe in yourself then quit. Yeah. Then quit. I mean, it's not going to be easy, right. but just think about all the time that you're spending working, building somebody else's dream when you can take that time and be building your own. Absolutely. Yeah. So how could people find out about you um, and contact you and come get this work? Well, you can come help me get these coins at, no, <laughs> you can uh, find me at her name is Kim.com. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I'm at. Her name is Kim. Her name is Kim.com. I'm on Facebook under H N I K creative studio and H N I K stands for her name is Kim. Um, H N I K creative studio. That's on Facebook. And I do Facebook lives every Monday at 7 PM Pacific standard time. Okay. And that's on your page as well. Her name is Kim is on the Facebook page. Yes. Or they can just find me at my regular Facebook page under Kimberly Marie Clements. That is my main, that's where I mainly do them. I kind of go back and forth. Just depends on what I'm talking about. Um, Mm -hmm. So they can find me there. Okay. Got you. Well, um, I appreciate your time, Kim and everybody listening, man. um, Just, just stop playing. Please (laughs) stop playing. Don't Don't be like, yeah, don't don't be like Kim. <laughs> don't be like Kim at a, at a job for three years, even though she could have quit. Cause you could have. I like my job though. I like my job. I did mm-hmm. like it. I had a but great time. But what do you? But what do you like better? Do you like your job or do you like where you at now? Man, this is so bomb. See I what I'm saying? <laughs> See what I'm saying? See if, if you would have if you would have met me a long time ago, that I probably would have made you quit. Probably. Because yes. I, I don't be playing yes. them games, especially when you got talent and you and you're not stupid and you already making it happen. Nah, we gotta yeah. we gotta get you to jump off the porch. Yep. So, so I'm good now, though. I'm off the porch. I'm good to go. Yeah, you better not go back. I'm not. I don't plan on it. I mean, no, I you know, plan. you don't plan on it, and you don't. I don't have a plan B. I don't have a plan B. There so we this go. Is it. This there we is go. All that's so what I'm, I. That's what I needed to hear. There you go. <laughs> I don't That's plan. I don't I have another plan. So this is it for me. This is it. This is your life. This is my life. There we mm-hmm. go. Well, everybody listening, um, that is Kim Marie or Kimberly Marie. My bad. And uh, okay. if you, if you want to, you know, hit her up. If you're a lady, then hit her up. Um, everything is going to be in the show notes, and we're going to highlight you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Starts with the Vision podcast. Come get your vision clear at www.startswiththevision.com. See you there.